Welcome to another Foss North. I would like to start by thanking our gold sponsors, our silver sponsors, our base sponsors, and our partners from the community. So, good morning, everyone. Welcome to another Foss North, and good afternoon to uh, Arief. <laughs> I, I'm sure there are other people in other time zones as well. Um, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Swapflame Mane, and I think you're lunchtime-ish at the moment. Yes. <laughs> well, welcome. The stage is yours. Great. Uh, Namaskaram, everyone. Welcome to Post North, and uh, thank you so much, uh, John, for inviting me. Uh, let me start by sharing my screen. So today we will uh, talk about how you can grow and manage your open source project. With a proven way. Uh, the moment the we do not see the screen share. Yes, yes, yes. I'm about to share it. Just okay, good. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Cool. So today we will see how you can grow and manage your open source project with the Apache way. Apache way is one of the proven way of uh, managing the open source project. Uh, so let's let's start with sharing my screen. Uh, I hope it is visible. It is. Now it works perfectly. Great. Thank you. Uh, cool. So I would like to start with a little bit about myself. I am Swapnilam Mane. I am the Vice President of Apache Community Development Project and uh, Apache Foundation member and the member of Central Services uh, Editorial at the ASF. I'm the founder at Open Source Wave, the non for profit initiative to spread the open source awareness. And we uh, build content around open source to educate the community. Apart from that, I'm the founder and chair of uh, Apache Local Community. Uh, we uh, it's an uh, initiative to spread the awareness of Apache Software Foundation and the uh, and the open source and uh, and I'm also the uh, taking care of developer relations department at Webini. Webini is an open source uh, uh, platform for building serverless application and it's also have a serverless CMS. So let's jump into the uh, presentation. So. Uh, what were the the guideline for this presentation? How it will will look like is I will give a quick quick introduction about Apache Software Foundation. Then I will give the idea of Apache Way, the way we manage open source projects at Apache, and how you can take inspiration for it for your open source project. And then I will uh, share some highlights of how uh, uh, you can grow your project in terms of uh, which is not only specific to Apache Software Foundation or Apache Way. It will apply to uh, uh, all the commercial open source projects uh, as well. So we will take a deeper look into that. And after that, you can ask me your questions, and I will be happy to answer that. So uh, Apache Software Foundation is world's largest open source foundation. It is a non for profit organization registered in the United States at US 501c3. And uh, it's uh, funded by the individual donors and the corporate sponsors. And uh, all volunteer organizations. So we are managing 350 plus open source projects. Uh, there's a saying that if you haven't slept uh, for past eight hours, it means you have used some or something related to Apache project. project. So we are almost everywhere. Uh, and uh, as it's the world's largest open source foundation, and there are more than 350 plus projects. One of the popular projects through which the journey was started is the HTTP server. Uh, so uh, the history is uh, the Apache Software Foundation started with the uh, HTTP web server project. Often that server is ca called as Apache, uh, and uh, some uh, some software engineers came together and uh, via patches and email in 1995. Around that time, uh, they are uh, contributing for this uh, web server, and eventually uh, the formal incorporation of ASF uh, became in the June 1999. So. There was a history from 1995 to 1999. People were just uh, doing it informally for that web server project. There are a lot of projects in Apache Software Foundation, and all of them are following the Apache way, the way we uh, organize our open source projects. And uh, there are 350 plus successful open source projects having a good community and using uh, at enterprise level. Uh, so some of the popular projects you might heard of is uh, obviously the HTTP server, which is very popular. Apart from that, for the big data, we have the Kafka, the Maven, the build, uh, build management, the cloud stack for cloud computing, the CouchDB, 
WebBiz, uh, there are various libraries, the Spark, the Cordova, the Tomcat is one of uh, uh, very famous, and the NetBeans, the ID uh, is now also the part of Apache Umbrella. You can find more details at projectstartapache.org. Now it's come to the, our main topic for the day, which is the Apache way. So what is Apache way? So it's basically the core principle we follow at Apache to manage our project, or you can say uh, it's an effective way of managing open source projects, which we figure out over the years and we formalize it and we document it so that we can uh, 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 create the awareness uh, around it. So the good thing to notice here is the Apache way is we follow in Apache Software Foundation, but it is not specific to Apache Software Foundation uh, when you try to implement it. You can implement it for your own open source projects, and I'm sure the result will be really good. So there are five main pillars of the Apache way. One is the community, another is merit, uh, third is the communication, fourth is open development, and fifth one is decision making. So we will have a deeper look into that, and after that, I will uh, give some more details about the how you can manage your commercial open source project or generally often it's uh, as a cost or generally almost all the open source projects have some uh, financial aspects or the ecosystem around that so that the contributor can can benefit from that. So we'll talk about that and how, how you can grow in that particular way. So let's start with the community. So we say community over code and it's applicable to almost all the open source projects. Open source projects are uh, often managed by the volunteers, uh, a core group. So they they form the community, right? Means uh, the community is core of any open source projects. If it's not, if there is no community, uh, you cannot predict uh, the good future of that open source projects. So uh, if you talk about the community, if you, if you take any open source projects, uh, most of the communications are done async. They people don't live together, they don't work together, and many of them don't even know each other, right? It's applicable to uh, uh, many open source projects, many enterprise grade open source projects. So well, then well, what we call as a community, the communities includes the developer, the writers, the testers, the sysadmin people, the DevOps, the users. So. Uh, in any open source projects, there are developers. People generally often think only the developers are the part of community. It's, it's not. There are there are various ways in which people can contribute to open source, not only specific to code. Obviously, the code is one of the prime part uh, and, and mostly often done, but there are another way, like people can create docs for you. Some people can do just testing for your open source projects. Uh, Open source projects need some deployment, right? In real life, you will deploy their, your open source project somewhere. So the system admins and the DevOps people can give you their thoughts. And the uh, most important, our users, they are the part of our community. They use our product and because they're of them, we can say the project is successful. So this is all we can call as a community. Okay, now the next part is, uh, uh, in open source pro in every open source project we have a community so our primary goal should be uh, put our community first uh, and in in apache we say community over code uh, what what that just mean is uh, uh, it, it means that uh, a, a good community can eventually convert a bad code into good code but if your community is bad a good code will be deprecated and become the bad code because in, in software world we need the maintenance of every software right so that's why we put community over code. And this is the fundamental thing which, which we should follow in our open source project. Our community comes first and then the, all the parts are came after that because the community will make the project successful. Uh, wearing your hat uh, and uh, treating people as an individual. So in Apache Software Foundation, uh, uh, everyone uh, is treated as an individual, not as an employee of, of, of their uh, corporation they belong. Uh, the reason for that is, for example, uh, today you are in one corporation, tomorrow your contributor can be in different, different organization. So you should also identify your contributors from uh, an individual perspective, not from, their, uh, from which corporation they belong. So we do have this in Apache, but it's also a good strategy to follow in your open source projects. So instead of uh, uh, deriving uh, the project from and corporate, 
it's better that individuals should drive that project because uh, uh, it's very true that eventually what happened is sometimes the uh, open source projects are derived by the corporations. And if, if this is the case, other contributors don't take that much interest because they clearly see that that particular XYZ organization is running that project or they are dominating. So it's not sometimes it's not uh, uh, good for the uh, developer experience. Uh, so that's why uh, we should try to manage in a such a way our project that it should be driven by the people, not the uh, corporate uh, of uh, which belong which which employing that people. So it's just applied the same in the Apache. We we have uh, the corporate sponsors, but the the organization is run by the volunteers and they are the individuals. They are not recognized by their company. So this is a good thing we, we can also uh, take care. And also, obviously, uh, uh, there is uh, there is way, various way means I, I belong to an organization and I also participate in the Apache. So there could be thing that I, in particular incidents, I would like to represent my organization. So uh, I just change the signature of my email and where I say now I am speaking on the behalf of my organization and not as a as a as a, uh, as another part. And also, I, as I mentioned, I'm I'm playing multiple role in the Apache. So I, I have to explicitly ex uh, say which role I'm currently playing, whether I'm the vice president or I'm a simply contributor or I'm uh, saying this as a user or I am the part of central editorial team. So this is the th uh, thought about wearing your hats. It's it's more specific to the Apache, but uh, uh, the important core to be taken here for your open source project is it should be driven by the individual people. The corporate uh, should not have a bigger influence on the direction of the projects. Obviously, when uh, uh, more people, uh, it, it gives a, a negative impact when somebody outside the new contributors see that this particular organization is dominating the open source project, this open source project. So uh, uh, when, when doing your open source project strategy, uh, this, should, this thing should be taken care of. Uh, the next part is meritocracy. It's very important, the recognition of work. See, uh, people contribute to the open source, but everybody needs some kind of feedback and the recognition of their work. Many people don't uh, even need that, but the most of the uh, uh, community uh, members appreciate it if you do it. So we should found a way through which we can recognize their work. And this will encourage the community members to contribute more. So the fundamental thing is to you should have a welcoming community and have a way to recognize their work. Let me share you some example how you can recognize their work. There are various ways. Uh, one of the uh, 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 good thing we follow at the Apache is the merit growth. Means based on your uh, on your merit, the people get the uh, uh, the new uh, powers. For example, when initially somebody is using a, a project, uh, for example, a simple project, uh, they are the users, right? Every open source project have users, so they are called as users. Now, eventually, some people from the user community will contribute to your project, right? So they become the contributors. And when a contributor, uh, uh, so how they generally contribute, they give the patch or they uh, create a pull request, the document, or generally it's a pull request or the patch they provide. Then once we see a contributor is providing good enough, we increase their batch to committer. The meaning of committer is now they are allowed to commit or the, make changes in the official repository of that particular project. So similarly, what we can do as an open source project is we can define a path for our contributors and the community members. For example, if somebody is contributing really uh, at, at good frequency and the contribution is really good, we can invite them to uh, join our core team. Obviously, it's not about giving them job, but it's giving them the recognition so that they can be participate in the uh, in the core uh, meeting of the that open source projects. Uh, so coming back to the uh, the uh, journey which we had Apache, and we can take the similar approach or some part of it uh, to your open source project. Then we come the PMC members, uh, who are the uh, 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 members who elect the new committers and. Uh, take care of the direction of the projects because uh, Apache is a volunteer organization and every project has this structure because we need some or a committee to oversight the uh, and set the direction of the project. So PMC members are those. Then we have vice president for every project. 
and eventually uh, uh, since uh, uh, then we some people become the ASF member uh, it's uh, it's on invite basis currently we have more than 800 plus members across the globe so in in uh, in normal operation like we have these shareholders a uh, similar analogy you can have for this non-profit as a member and then we have our board of directors which are taking care of the whole organization and making sure the things are at right place so what we can take inspiration from this is we should define a career path for our contributors and we should recognize their their contribution so there is a way to encourage them so we can have uh, the users then the contributors then we can invite them to uh, make commits in our uh, actual repository then we can also uh, uh, invite them to join the core team uh, uh, which can which took the decision of the project and uh, uh, the responsible people the core responsible for the project we can invite them to join the core team uh, apart from that there is various way like you can have the ambassador for your open source projects to uh, to encourage them and to recognize them so there is one way i, I will cover more, uh, some more details about that in in our last last session of the last part of this session now another important part is the communication right uh, I see uh, uh, this is one of the critical part. Uh, generally, the success of your open source projects depend how well you can communicate with your community. It's not only about uh, choosing a language. It's not about just uh, having an, a language in place. For example, we are most of the people are using English language and your project will be successful. No, it's not like that. The way you communicate with your community create a big impact on the success of your open source project. It should be the collaborative and constructive communication. I see. Uh, see, uh, people are volunteer in the uh, in the open source project. So if you uh, if you if you if you don't uh, uh, encourage them and have a collaborative and the constructive communication, there's a very high chances they will go away. So it's important to uh, collaborate and have a constructive communication. No, no contribution is a, a small contribution. Even if somebody gives up, uh, raise a PR for your open source projects, acknowledge them, say them thank you, and it's uh, and and appreciate them, and say them it's uh, your contribution is very important for us. Even if it's a small typo change they are doing, because somebody is taking time from uh, from their daily work and and put some time in uh, contribution. So we should take care of it and uh, have a very constructive and collaborative communication. Uh, see, one thing really happen is whenever you are in open source, there is always a, a, a difference in the opinion. Having difference in the opinion is a good thing. But if there is conflict happened, we should be able to manage it in a proper way. And here the comp uh, responsibility of core people comes into the picture. If you see some communication is going or is not going in a good way, you should immediately jump there and make sure that the communication becomes right and and people are not fighting with each other uh, instead they are uh, become the constructive dis, uh, communication i know it's difficult but it, it it's uh, you have to as a core team or the maintainer of the open source world you have to jump in there so keep your eye on that part apart from that it's good to have a code of conduct obviously the, the thing is uh, see uh, most of the people never go are going to read the code of conduct because uh, it's a, do a long document having a lot of things but but some people really do care for it. And at the same time, this is the refresh line for you to make decision on any situation. For example, if something happened and if you don't have a reference manual, what should I do at this situation? Your code of conduct will help you. So you should include your code of conduct in your GitHub repository or on any of the open source repository you are maintaining for your open source project. Uh, if, especially in the GitHub, there is a very easy way to add a code of conduct. There are already available template. You can take the inspiration for existing code of conduct. For example, if you go to Apache, you are free to use our code of conduct. At the same time, there are various great community of around open source projects and the foundation. You can take their code of conduct. And, and also in GitHub, you can use existing templates. So it's up to you. But there should be the code of conduct which you can uh, refer and this can help the community to the decision and uh, and in, in case of any conflict or sometimes this, uh, the communication goes wrong so this can help you there uh we use english for our uh, core development because it's a global community across the globe at the same time uh, most of the people are using the english language 
but if you think your community is uh, for example uh, belongs to a region where the english is not their primary language as they are using some another language it's good to create the documentation in that language as well uh, it will uh, give you the uh, for newcomer it will be an easy access to have the document in in their language which they understand easily but obviously the language uh, the primary language should be english because an open source project is having global community at least it have a scope of having a global community so if you are starting it's good to uh, select the english language but at the same time if 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 you are targeting a particular uh, 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 people who belongs to a certain geography where the english is not a primary language and they have difficulty in it it's good to have it's good to have the alternate language as well but it's not uh, i'm not talking about removing english because it's create a good uh, it's important when you you will grow in future but it's to have a complementary another language you can create your docs in that language or maybe a separate channel to uh, help the community of that particular geography communication in the mailing list in the in in, in the uh, in its uses see uh, in in apache we have this four types of and there are others as well but primarily every project have uh, this four communication mailing list so we all, uh, we have all of our communication on the mailing list so uh, uh, we have a user mailing list where users can post their questions then we have a developer mailing list if you are not aware of mailing list it's a, a simply a mail uh, uh, mail uh, mail id where everybody can post their questions and everybody get uh, uh, the uh, access to that mailing list so if somebody post every year everybody get the uh, information somebody posted on this list and they can also post on this mailing list nowadays the slack channel or the discord or another uh, chat applications are now much more popular uh, the forums are also getting popular so you can imagine this like a forum uh, just to give the analogy it's not exactly the forum so we have the four type of mailing list uh, you can take the same inspiration for your open source project uh, in user mailing list uh, the users post their question that how to use this software we are having this problem or these are the some suggestions so users generally post questions on the users list the development mailing list is for discussion of uh, the uh, the development related discussion of the project that uh, architecture related part of that so all that discussion goes to the development uh, mailing list similarly we have the commits list where the uh, uh, all, since every project have some version control system whether it's svn or the github so all all everything which is get committed in that repository a uh, no, notification is goes to this commit list uh, apart from that we have one private list uh, which is solely for discussing of the uh, security bugs or the vulnerability security vulnerabilities we discuss on the private list and also the invitation for the new committers or new PM, pmc members it done in the private list so these are the uh, four part of the uh, communication channels you should also have something similar to it for your open source project where your users can pose the questions where your development community can have a discussion to improve your project you can also have a separate uh, place for the commits so that uh, if somebody is interested in uh, learning or getting take care of every commits that done in the repository uh, you should have uh, something for it and an important is to have a private channel for the communication which is restricted for uh, for the limited people uh, everybody can join that private communication those who are the part of core team will be able to join this private communication because it may include some sensitive uh, communication like uh, security discussions or inviting a new members or for example somebody something is not happening in the good in the community and you can discuss it here and and uh, uh and uh derive a solution for it so i'm not recommending to have you the mailing list but what i'm recommending here is having a separate channel or at least a defined channel for your users developers and have a private communication is good to have it's good for managing that open source projects now let's talk about the open development and the time shifting uh see uh uh most of the time the open source projects are managed by the global community obviously when it is started there is a hand of handful of people uh, who are doing it and they generally have uh, uh, it start with one or two developers who are passionate about it they work together and then the it become the open source project and eventually people across the globe join your project uh, uh, community right but uh, you should be thinking of your project as a global project from the beginning you should not think that 
only two people is currently managing this open source project so we can manage it the way we want uh, you should not follow that approach because there's a higher chances or at least you you should have a hope of making that project as a as a global project right so uh, you should use some kind of forum or uh, to discuss the uh, discuss the things uh, for example uh, if two people who just started that open source project they even should not discuss the, anything in the private they should discuss the things in the public forum even they are uh, near to each other because it it open up the way to uh, a com a people from the outside the world can join the discussion and help you there and the communication should be asynchronous because obviously everybody belongs to different job or different location they have a different time zone their motivation to join your project is different somebody join is because their company is doing it somebody join your project as a hobby project so so you should have the asynchronous communication in place we have been uh, saying in apache way that if it doesn't happen on the mailing list it it didn't happen uh, so we archive our every communication so if you would like to see the what happened 15 year ago you can go and uh, see in our mailing list similar approach you should follow what i'm saying is, is this i'm not uh, suggesting to use the mailing list you can use forum or any chat uh, platform but the archive of information is very important why because uh, you see right whenever a new person joined the type of question they ask is almost similar means if person is joining your project today or person joining your project after one month the type of question they ask is, is similar so if you can archive if you are archiving your that communication you can just clearly give the reference of past communication for open source project your communication is your asset your repository is your asset definitely but the way the all type of communication which you have done for that open source project is your asset and you should not level let you let let it go right some people use the uh, uh, the channels which which is not archivable you should find alternative for it because the archiving things is very important it will help new people to go the archive things and get reference from them for example if somebody is stuck in something they can just google it and uh, if the information archive properly and have a google index they can clearly find the solution to their problem they don't have to come to the community and ask the question so you should uh, think in this way that how you can archive your all the communication so it will be beneficial for the entirely community even in the future and uh, uh, asynchronous way is a good way uh, to uh, to have the communication uh, definitely you can have some call uh, monthly call or the weekly call uh, the monthly call is good for open source project where you can invite other community members uh, to just have one to one chat but the most of the communication should be asynchronous because you have, you might have the uh, community across the globe and it's, it's give time to them to uh, interact with you but the archive is important uh, if you have any question about it how, how you can archive you can be uh, there's a there's a various way we can you can use the forum there's a various forums available for your open source project or if your project is uh, capable of having mailing list it's good to have that as well now let's talk about the decision making uh, see the thing is uh, if the limited people are taking decisions or not inviting other community and the, your community to part in, uh, participate in the decision it's not good thing the reason is uh, uh, your community will feel that uh, the handful of people is running this open source project and this will directly impact your contribution uh, pattern so you should be have a welcoming community and involve your community in take, taking the decisions for example if you are doing a release uh, have a consensus for it if you are uh, trying to implement a new feature it's good to present that in front of community ahead of implementing implementing it so if have if somebody is having some question or having some thoughts or at least they will feel that you are you are you are trying to uh, trying to invite them to become the part of the decision making so uh, if you are doing uh, any new feature it's good to post that on 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 your channel that hey we are trying to we are we are started thinking of implementing this new feature if you are any any thoughts or feedbacks please let us know 
and you will see this will uh, increase your community contribution people will start uh, talking about it see the contribution not limited to uh, the code if somebody give a good idea it's 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 another kind of contribution some in some places you may need a vote and it's it's good to have a, a official vote for example uh, if you are uh, releasing something and you you think that this is a critical release and may uh, break something for the uh, after the uh, previous release so it's good to have a voting uh, so that uh, even people can test your uh, application for example new version might have some bug so before actually releasing it you can have a, a, a official voting on it and if somebody have a people can have a plus one which means everything is good people may have a minus one and when they have a minus one, we sh you should encourage them you to tell the reason why you are saying a minus one. Uh, is there any problem uh, in the release? Uh, is there any security bug which you are figuring out? Or is there any half baked functionality which is the part of this release and that's why you are saying we should not release it uh, this time? There could be various inputs which you can got from the community. So even the core team can give their voting. So the voting will be in public and, and the core team can also say plus one to release it and uh, maybe if somebody uh, from the community say plus one to release it and if somebody is saying minus one uh, uh, at the starting of the vote you should tell if you are saying minus one please do let us know the reason to not have this release so i i give the example of having voting for release but it's applicable to everywhere uh, where you think you can take the participation for the community and can make them uh, can involve them uh, you can you can you can do this by uh, by uh, voting and involving them some things to uh, take care from uh, from when you, whenever you started a vote, uh, it should be lost for at least seven to two hours, because uh, in general the seven to two hours uh, cover almost uh, all the time zones. Uh, so in in seventy two hours, everybody had their twenty four hours and their working hours, and it's better to have uh, uh, any anything between uh, keep your vote open anything between seventy two hours to one week. Uh, you can open it for one week. That that's a standard practice, and and you can have that as well. Cool. So this was something about the Apache way, which I have uh, currently discussed at this point of time. Now, based on my experience with the commercial open source projects and and the open source projects which are not the part of Apache umbrella, I would like to discuss a few points which which can help you uh, growing your open source projects. See. Uh, when you will call your open source project is successful definitely first when you, when you have a large adoption you have a lot of users for your open source projects there's definitely a success if you see many people are using your open source projects there's definitely a success but another important measure for your success is how many people are helping each other in the community for example your pro, uh, open source project have a core member of five people or maybe 10 people and if you see only those 10 people are helping the community, it's not a good thing for an open source project, right? Everybody uh, from the open source or most of the people from the open source community should help either, each other. If you think your only core team can help uh, your uh, whole community, it is not going to scale because you always have a, a, a limited core team. Obviously, most of the answers will be done by the core team, but you should nurture your community in such a way that they should be feel welcoming and they should be helping each other not only the core team because if you have 100 users definitely 10 members can uh, uh, address their question but if your open source project grow and you have a uh, 10000 or 1 lakh users that the core team can, uh, core team can't answer everybody's query right so you have to nurture your community in such a way that they start helping each other so that will be a successful part that is a successful uh, success matrix for an open source project apart from that have a good documentation and the resources see this is the core of any open source project if you are having a very good code and if you if you are, don't have a good resources or the documentation nobody is going to know you have a good project so if I talk about open source documentation, there's a various way you can manage it. Mean, invite your community to help you in the documentation. There are various uh, open source uh, tools available. 
which are uh, even open source projects which are available you to have the documentation for your project so make sure your documentation is really very good it is good for the beginner it is good for the the mediocre people who uh, medium people who have a good in a time in the community at the same time it should be have a good documentation for for uh, advanced things which can be done with your open source project so please focus on it document everything means how somebody can contribute to your project document that document how your how to use your open source project document how new people can contribute to your open source project so there is various thing you should document please uh, spend some time on it coming from the developer uh, uh, community and the background developer don't like documenting but but please uh, uh, please trust me if you are not documenting it you are going to lose the uh, community and 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 your uh, your chances of becoming a good open source project i know it took time but if you have a, a, some open source project like docusaurus or there are other open source project or uh, documentation uh, projects available you uh, use uh, that projects to uh, document your things so that other people can also contribute to it apart from that there are various resources in which you should be active right you should be your project should be active on twitter or maybe linkedin or 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 reddit wherever your community is active you should be active on that platform generally twitter is really good to have so because you have to keep tweeting about it because it's not like that so it's not like there right means you build something open source and uh, on day one the community will uh, be there to help you and you got a massive success it's not it's not reality you have to go to the people and say them hey this is the project this is open source project we are doing come and join us and i'm we are hopeful that will help you so this social media platforms are good way to uh, post about your uh, your your projects and i will encourage the core team to post everything from their personal account as well keep talking about it keep a post on the linkedin keep uh, have a tweet on twitter or maybe if you are using facebook uh, and your community is active on facebook do there whatever you feel your community is active on it do that apart from that have a uh, have a uh, we should important focus on the uh, project set setup see most of the newcomer uh, why they don't start contributing to your open source project is they found difficulty in installing your project or having the uh, develop env environment ready for your open source project so spend good time on, on it see if you prepare a document that do this 10 things to set up a, a project on on their machine chances are you are going to fail because the day is gone when people just follow that complete document nowadays people have a npm and the yarn so they have just uh, have to just uh, use the cli and everything is there for them to uh, their development environment is just ready so you should also thinking that way that how effectively and very easily your end user or your contributor can set up your project please put time on it uh, how you can do that means uh, uh, even with few commands your project should be set up in your uh, contributors machine if this is the thing uh, there is a highly chances of adaptability but if you it's very difficult for somebody to uh, set up your project uh, you will have a, a less uh, you will got the friction for for from the contribution side so make sure your project setup is should be easy for newcomer and uh, at the same time uh, if you are making any upgrade the upgrade uh, guide should be uh, in the place so that they can upgrade to the newer version next thing is a good first issue uh, for example if you are having uh, there is an there is an uh, uh, thing in the github this is a good first, uh, first issue so uh you should mark the issue which you think is uh, easily for pick up for newcomers you should label them as a good first issue in this way the newcomer who is coming to your repository can figure out hey this is some uh, something uh, easy to pick up and they can pick it up and from there they start uh, their contribution journey to their your open source project and from there you can nurture them to become uh, to contribute more apart from that is the partner network uh so it's not only specific to uh, open source projects uh, for example uh, see the thing is uh, uh, nobody uh, 
very few people are contribute to open source just for the fun purpose the things has changed now now if you believe or or agree or not but there is monetary aspect uh, aspect behind open source projects see uh, initially we call open source project a piece of software right but the free term was giving misconception to the people people was thinking free relating to the money but the free was not related to money free was related to the freedom so that's why we changed the name from uh, uh, free software to the open source and the credit goes to kristen peterson uh, she uh, coined this term and and people adopted it so similarly the free is not about having no money in the project you should have the way through which your contributors and your people can earn money or they can provide services on the top of your project so that it will become it, it you should have to give a monetary model to your users and the contributor so there are two type of uh, users to your application somebody who is just using your application and they are saving money uh, uh, from the proprietary uh, they are not giving money to the proprietary people because they are using a open source project definitely your project will get successful and apart from that you should have a network of the people or at least network of the organization or you should have a, something in a place which tell your contributors how to earn money from that maybe how how people can give services on top of your project so there's a lot of things uh, uh, the uh, nowadays cost c o w s things are very coined terms you can explore more about on google and uh, what i'm saying is you should have a model to uh, to uh, monetary model to allow your contributors not to you your contributors and community to build monetary aspect on top of your project so think on it and this is where people where you can uh, attract more contributors because everybody need uh, some monetary uh, aspect to back their efforts right the next thing is uh, i would like to discuss about is a feedback and the survey uh, have a continuous engagement with your community ask for continuous questions and uh, 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 have the survey for them to ask the questions ask questions about that how you can improve it if they have if they are having any problem if they have any feedback for ask them and on that feedback decide your next project plan for your open source project so feedback is really really important and you should do it you can do it uh, via survey you can do it via uh, maybe if you are uh, having a channel you can uh, for example any chat channel posted there but a survey should be there a feedback is really important and take the feedback then work on that feedback it's comp- it's a loop it's ever ever uh, ever going loop you have to do it always so do that to grow your open source project i would like to uh, thank for uh, shane kukru i use uh, a various part of the apache web which which he documented in various places uh, i took uh, some part of it uh, thanks thanks shane uh, for preparing that and uh, you can follow me on the uh, twitter uh, uh, my handler is swapnil amane so if you have any question you can you can you can any time post me there apart from that i am running open source wave youtube channel i create a lot of content for open source uh, related to open source it's a non for profit initiative from my side uh, you can uh, uh, visit this channel and uh, if you have any questions please feel free to post me uh, even after this session if you have any question for me uh, i am i am willing to help to all the open source people and uh, voluntary what uh, would like to help help you your project so please do let me know if you have any question please uh, let me know in the twitter i'm i'm acting there and uh, please visit the uh, open source web youtube channel where you can find more tips and tricks and know more about other open source projects which are uh, there and might be help you and if you want to feature me your open source project uh, create or if you want to create uh, about your open source project to me uh, please do reach out to me via twitter i will be uh, will be more than happy to do that as well uh, depending on my my uh, uh, availability and i would love to promote your open source project as well so uh, if you have any questions uh, i will open uh, open up for the questions and please do let me know i will be happy to answer your questions thank you a lot spocknell so so i've collected some some questions let me turn on my camera and be a bit social here 
Hi. <laughs> uh, so, so the first question is from from Henrik, who wonders what what the most popular programming languages are in the Apache project, and if you, as an organization, try to influence the use of certain languages. Uh, yes. So. Uh... Uh, the simple answer is no. Uh, we don't promote any open uh, uh, any language. Uh, what generally is people think is people think Apache provide an open source project. In reality, it's, it's not happened that way. What people do is people have their open source project and they contribute that to the Apache community. And we have an incubation in place where we help them to grow their community. We give them idea how you can grow your project. We give them tools to make their community, uh, like we give, give them tools to manage their infrastructure. We give tools like mailing lists to effectively communicate with the community. So it, it generally people uh, outside the Apache thought that Apache is providing open source project, but actually outside the world gives project to the Apache Software Foundation. And after incubation, uh, generally incubation take a one year time where we see uh, the people are uh, the community is from the uh, should not be from just one organization. It should be, it should be the global community or at least a, a dispersed community. And then uh, we we told them we we, uh, we guide them how to make the releases, how to discuss the security vulnerabilities, how to grow your community. And this this company take uh, uh, taken care in our incubation project. So people join the incubation project and then they become the part of Apache Umbrella and become the top level project. So to answer your questions, uh, generally Apache don't uh, uh, think in that way that this is a popular language and we should build a, a project uh, on top of it. But it's really good part you mentioned here and it's a really good topic. So if you are building an open source project, it's good to have a survey, which are the top uh, programming language used by the developer and uh, uh, build your open source project in that. It will open up the, uh, the chances of adoption of your, uh, your uh, project. If you remember, most of the people are now migrating from JavaScript to TypeScript because it, uh, it's uh, a lot of benefit, like uh, it's, uh, it's give you some bugs upfront in, uh, and gives you more flexibility. Some people are uh, moving from uh, Java to Python because of, of the offering of that particular language. So my recommendation is, uh, you have uh, two things in your mind. Uh, one, definitely, what are the top programming language in the market? Uh, you should try to use those language. At the same time, you should uh, select your language based on the need of your project. For example, if you are, want to build something in the machine learning and that part of kind, uh, you should choose the language uh, or the framework which is uh, 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 which is uh, which can help your machine learning aspect. You can just go with some other other language. Right? So in in the both of the, the thing. Uh, both things should be the consider and i i do agree with you language is important so before starting your project or if you are already having a project and planning to migrate your language uh, there is a lot of survey available in the market the stake overflow survey is available there is a, a, a lot of good agencies whose uh, 2021 survey is also available for the past year uh, which has a top program language so it's good to see that yeah cool Thank you. And then I have a question from Luna. Um, I have Apache been thinking of switching from to Matrix instead of Slack uh, as an open communication channel. Yes. So uh, what we have done is uh, uh, in Apache Software Foundation, we are using Slack channel. But uh, for us, uh, the Slack channel is not our official channel. Means uh, we don't consider that. Uh, uh, means if we have to say something has happened in Apache, it should be on mailing list. If some discussion is had on Slack, we don't consider it as official uh, official uh, uh, communication. I have inputs for you. Your open source project here is see you can uh, uh, choose Slack or Discord or forum based on your need. The thing is nowadays the community or the people don't wait for uh, uh, don't want to wait for their answers, right? They put the question and they need some real people who who uh, want to answer. So it's really great and good to have your chat channel as well so that people can directly uh, post their questions and you can directly answer them. But in this journey, you should not do uh, the common mistake, which is not archiving your communication. Because what generally happens is for, two, uh, for, for one or two years, you will keep answering the questions of the people. But if you don't archive it, uh, 
the questions are going to repeat and it's it's uh, become your effort from your side to just keep answering that so a forum is a is a is a good option and github discussion is also a good option means what you can do is your frequently asked answers question you can move it to github or you can encourage your community hey if you have something to chit chat or quickly let's post it here but you ask a good question please ask it uh, on our forum or github discussion so we can answer it there and it will help the future adopters to uh, uh, take the reference from that so uh, using chat is a good thing you should use it but you should not making it as your primary channel of communication because having it is having some archive problems and it's not searchable so my recommendation to use is uh, if you have a budget in your open source project use a forum along with your channel and uh, if you, if you don't have a budget uh, go for github discussions it's free to use currently in the beta version but it, it is uh, having a decent uh, functionalities to answer your problem so so that actually leads me on so, so i will reshuffle the questions a bit so so one of the things with archiving do you see a conflict uh, with gdpr and these these newer privacy laws and archiving this type of content right uh, the thing is uh, uh, in in most of the nations means we are doing it apache from many years so we didn't find any any uh, complications there the thing is uh, yeah, whatever i talked about is i talked about in terms of open source project if you are having a mind that i would like to steal some data from the user please don't do that it's not a good thing what some people do uh, what they do is uh, for example they have a open source project and uh, through cli their project can be deployed unknowingly they they uh, or intentionally they take some user information uh, uh, which is not anonymous so if you are doing that kind of thing you should explicitly tell your users hey i'm i'm collecting this information uh, or do you want to agree on that but most of the open source project never collect this information uh, so you don't have this uh, this issue of uh, 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 legal issue related to them, and uh, most of the question uh, the things which I am talking about archiving archiving is the communication which is done on the public platform. I am talking about archiving that uh, that uh, uh, that communication because in public platform nobody share their uh, actual personal data, right? What they generally do is they ask the question, hey, I am having problem in this. And since they are explicitly asking on the public forum, that gives you freedom to uh, archive it. And if somebody asks on the forum, it's it's there for a, for for a long time, and and even Google will index it. So as long as it's not a critical information or sensitive information, there there will be not any legal problem. But I will recommend if you should have a certain channel for discussing the security vulnerability, you should encourage your people to discuss the security problem on a different channel, which is a private. Where only limited people have access to, so uh, that that's the one part. And uh, uh, if if something happened on the uh, public forum and it's not, you are not collecting sensitive information about your user, you are free to archive it. And uh, uh, we are doing it for a long time as as a big organization, as a part of the foundation. We never face any any issue or legal issue for that. It's good to know. And I, I'm jumping around a bit around the questions here as well, because we're, we're quickly running out of time. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have a, a good question here from Daniel, I think. So So you mentioned this good first issue. How, mm -hmm. how do you prevent them from getting immediately solved by experienced people? Because they, they tend to be low hanging fruits. So, so do you deliberately prevent people from solving them? Yeah, that's a really nice question. So what happened is uh, uh, we labeled it good first issue. and. Uh, uh, see, uh, see, there are two types of projects. One is a purely open source project, means uh, it's a purely volunteer project. No organization is backing them. It's a pure open source project. But there are nowadays there is a type of open source project which we call the cost. For example, if you build something open source projects, uh, if you build a project and make it open source, but at the same time there's a company behind it. Obviously, company is not uh, uh, taking any anything from the open source, or not they are uh, uh, killing the philosophy of open source. But that organization is build that open source projects, and they make it to the public. So, uh, so there is some core team behind it, which actually drive the project, and eventually new people can join the core team. But that core team is belongs to some organization which uh, which uh, which make this project open source. So, what generally things done is. Uh, uh, I, I know some community 
who have an internal understanding that if there is some good for first issue we will not pick it, pick it up we will keep it for the community and if some uh, experienced people from the community is picking it up it's good it's fine it's no problem but what i have observed is uh, since that uh, uh, that experienced pe uh, people you have to encourage them to become part of your core team and there uh, it's a, it's a non said statement but communicated to it's known to everybody means experienced people were very lessly pick up this type of uh, a good first issue the reason is they also want to encourage the uh, the contributions they also want new people to join them so what generally happened is uh, if you talk about the people who are uh, in the community from long time and you are calling them experience they will not pick uh, uh, this issue because they are already engaged with some big issues but if you are call if you are uh, uh, calling a people who is experienced in java for example experience having some technology and a new contributor to your project and they are picking this uh, good first issue it's fine you should uh, encourage them to pick them but what happened is eventually when your community grows and you have a uh, uh, experienced people who are in the community for long they themselves don't pick it they even encourage other people to uh, uh, to join the uh, join your project so it will not be issue uh, but uh, if if it is happen uh, but it will not happen a lot uh, it's not uh, going to happen that some experienced people pick all your good first issue it's not and if it's happen it's always uh, 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 you have a good way and gently to uh, say thank you and request them hey uh, can we do this thing we need your help in this particular critical issue please join us here so that we can have a bunch of open so uh, good first issue for our new comers so everybody is uh, an open source uh, is welcoming so if you if you request them they will definitely definitely uh, uh, uh definitely support you so then I, I saw that our next speaker just arrived but i i will end with with one last question which means that i will skip your evil question luna i'm, I'm sorry about running out of time uh but there's a question from andy here uh what's a good point to start contributing to apache Oh, no that's a good, that's a nice question right so before starting it since we can't take all the question so as i mentioned uh, you can ping me on my twitter handler and i will definitely going to uh, uh, answer your question there so please feel to reach me out and i'm 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 always willing to help the open source communities so please do ask me there if your question is not answered right now uh, and thank you for this good question about apache software foundation uh, uh, you can do one thing uh, you can go to projects.apache.org Uh, uh it's a projects.apache.org uh, the url it have listing of all the apache projects and there's a category uh, to filter it uh, 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 to bifurcate project based on programming language so if you are good at java you can filter out filter the project by java and get the list of all the projects there is one more filter uh, in that site which is uh, filter by the domain uh, for example if you want to work in the cms domain or in the erp domain or in the machine learning domain or in the content domain or in the observability domain they you can filter the uh, the project on basis of that as well so you can go there and filter based on your uh, liking and then uh, go to the website of that particular project uh, apache.org is is the foundation website and we have a sub website for all three, uh, 350 plus projects we have oibiz.apache.org spark.apache.org kasan.apache.org so you can go to their website and join their mailing list and ask them hey i explore your project and i would like to contribute to your project can you please guide me and i'm pretty much sure uh, every community is waiting for the new contributors so they will exactly guide you how to contribute to their project so uh, so i can't answer uh, answer how to contribute to this 350 pro projects but you can ask individually on 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 their their mailing list and and the experts from their community will definitely going to help you uh and uh, another way is definitely go to their repository and see for good first issue if you found some issue in their documentation tell them if you have any issue in following the documentation also tell them hey i followed your documentation and it's not very good for new user can we make some restructuring so there is a lot of way Uh, but to starting point could be projects.apache.org select pick up your project and then start contributing and asking the questions how how you can contribute thank you very much so so we're slowly running out of time so i'd like to to extend my thanks to you and and to everyone asking questions 
Uh, we will take a break for a minute, a minute and a half and set up the next speaker, but uh, I'll see you around. <laughs>